Jovi Alpando here. And first of all, I'd like to thank everyone for the response we got from our last video, Pool IQ. Now we're into Cue Ball IQ, which is learning to control the cue ball. The first thing that I'd like to teach you is naturally tangent, which is the, the most important thing in pool, is where the cue ball leaves the object ball and the lines that it has to take. And then we will work on our clock system, which is a follow and a, and a draw, and we'll learn how to incorporate both of them, the clock and tangent, which is a very simple thing to do and to learn how to control where your cue ball goes. Now we're not robots, so therefore we can't make every hit on our cue ball exactly the same. So therefore sometimes we might hit a 12-3 instead of a 12-2, and we might roll a little farther than, than we wanted to. But at least we will be within the area that we want to be. Okay, I'd like to explain our clock system and the way it works. Our clock, clock system has the clock, which is 1 through 12, and then we have our dead center, and our clock only has one hand, which would be the hour hand. So if I say 1.30, it means directly between the 1 and 2. Okay, and then from the center, we have one circle one-eighth of an inch away from center, and then we have another circle an eighth of an inch away from that one, and one more, so we have three circles. And these are what we're going to be used to control our lines. And uh, we'll be explaining more of that in the video. Okay, so the thing you want to remember on our clock is the 12-1, you're telling the cue ball to go like in first gear. 12-2, you're telling it to go in second gear. 12-3, you're telling it to go in third gear, or high speed. Same thing with the 6-1, 6-2, 6-3. So you have like gears in your car, first, second, and third. Now the most important thing in pool is where the Q-tip strikes the cue ball. On ours we have a 12 o'clock line and a third circle, which is the third circle from the center of the cue ball. And the Q-tip, if you're shooting at 12-3, your Q-tip will strike the cue ball approximately between the, the middle of your tip and the bottom end. Okay, what, what we're going to be dealing with net today is the tangent, which most people know what it is, but there are still some that don't really understand it. What it is is that when two balls make contact, that contact point, one cue ball will be 90 degrees to the other. In other words, one line is here, one line is here, and it's 90 degrees. So this ball that gets hit will leave on a 90 degree line to point a contact. Oh. Like that. Or if you're going to the other corner and you got a ball sitting over there, so when you hit it, that ball goes in there. So that's your tangent. It's 90 degrees to point of contact. If we have two balls like this, either one of these two balls can be can be made in that hole because there's your line of of your 90 degree line of this. So if we hit this one over here, six ball goes. If we hit it over here, the 11 ball goes. Like that. That's it. So this is what we have to learn is if this is our object ball and this is our cue ball, if we contact this here, there's our 90 degree line. If we contact it here like this, the 90 degree line is like this. So wherever our point of contact is, that's our 90 degrees. If we leave it at this, that would be both balls. Let's see if we see if we got it set up fairly close. Okay. All right, a little help. But anyway, that's what tangent is. Tangent is the 90 degree line of two balls making contact to each other. And what, most of the time we're speaking of the cue ball making contact with the object ball. So therefore, if our cue ball is here, I mean our object ball is here and our con contact point is here, our tangent line would be right out here. If it's over here, 
we're still going to make the ball, but now our contact point is no longer over here, it's here. 90 degrees to this, instead of 90 degrees to that. Tangent is best explained if this were the cue ball and that's your object ball, then your cue ball sits behind your point of contact to make the object ball into the center of the hole. A 90 degree line to this line, or a straight line going that way, that is your tangent. So the only way to stay on tangent is that the cue ball can have no forward motion, no backward motion. It has to slide in, hit your object ball, and then slide, and then the kinetic action or the way the ball within itself will start rolling over at 12 o'clock. That would be a perfect shot. Now, a perfect shot is very hard to do consistently because we're not robots and we can't hit this exact crosshairs of our 12, 6, 3, 9 exactly every time. But we can hit as close to it so that we're going to have we'll be right in the area that we want to be by making sure that we try to hit it as close to our crosshairs of 12, 6, 3, 9. So to give you an example, the, the cue ball has to leave at on tangent, but if you're following the ball, it, it leaves on tangent and then goes forward. If you're drawing the ball, it leaves on tangent and then comes backward. It's, but just to hold a center ball is just a center ball and let it roll. So then on a tangent, the cue ball must always leave at 90 degrees no matter whether you're drawing or following. If you're drawing, the cue ball will leave on tangent, which is 90 degrees to this, leave on tangent and then start back. Here's an example. This is just a 6-3. And if we're following the ball, we leave on tangent and go forward. So 12 3. So that shows you that the, the cue ball, no matter what, has to leave on tangent, drawing or following. That's the main thing you want to remember. Okay, the, one of the main things about tangent is that, you, that a person should remember is that you can always keep the ball, keep your line going from where your cue ball leaves. You can keep that line going all the way around. Okay, so Chad's going to show us that a tangent is 90 degrees to point of contact. So when the nine ball comes and sits and hits there, at center ball, He's telling it to go straight across, which is tangent, 90 degrees to point of contact. All right, go ahead. Just like that. One more time. So that's what tangent is. Tangent is 90 degrees to your point of contact so that we know a line that we can start from. So we know that that's our starting line. Now, if we want to back up one diamond or to that next one, we would shoot the ball with the 6-1. Okay, go ahead and hit a 6-1. And so he's, what he's doing with the 6-1, he's telling the cue ball to back up one diamond. Just like that. Okay. One more shot, and we'll move to a 6-2. There you go. Okay, now if it's 6-2, which is tangent is here, 6-1 is there, 6-2 is there. So move to a 6-2. And again, all of these shots, they have no side English at all, just nothing but a straight draw, which is a 6-2, which gives us less chance of big error, big errors. Good shot. So consistency is the key. It's having the, con the control of whether you need it for position or to make a ball or break balls up. That's what you want to do. Okay, try a 6-3 then, Chad. Put your ball in the hole. There you go. This is a 6-3, so you're backing up three diamonds. Just like that. Very nice shot. 
Okay, so that's how tangent works. We have to have a starting line, and our starting line is tangent. Now he's going to hit a 6-2. He's telling the cue ball, there's tangent. We need to back up one, two diamonds, which would be equal to a 6-2. On a 6-2, we have no English of any, no sight English of any type. Just have just a straight draw. Good hit. And that's what it's about, is the consistency of hitting that ball at the same time. And then from a 6-2, we're going to hit a 6-3. We'll shoot this one more time. Very nice. Okay, now we're going to go to a 6-3. So now we're telling, telling the cue ball with the 6-3 to back up one, two, three diamonds. Okay. Now this is the start of learning how to control the cue ball. You have to have a starting point, and our starting point is tangent. Very good. Very nice. Two. Need one more. You can tell he's had a little bit of practice at this. <laughs> so that's it. It's the consistency of being right in the same area all the, t all the time. Very nice. Okay, so that's your six one, six two, six threes. Next we're gonna shoot some twelve one, twelve two, twelve threes. Okay. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have Chad shoot some of its favorite shots here. It's just a tangent going from point A to point B. Okay, he's going to hit the crosshairs of 12, 6, 3, 9, and which creates a tangent running from here, this line, straight down. There's our 90 degrees. Okay, go ahead, Chad. It's a dead center hit on the cue ball, and that's how it works. Very good shot. Okay, we'll have him shoot one more like that. If you'll notice, we have him setting one ball back and one diamond out. Okay, so now what we're going to do now is we're going to move him back, one diamond back, still in the center, and one diamond back. So now according to our, our clock system, we should be hitting a 12-1, which means one diamond forward from point of contact. So he's trying to hit this contact one diamond straight down but he wants the cue ball to come one diamond forward so it would be a 12-1 just like that very nice Chad we'll do that and again one diamond out one ball width up and we want to go one diamond forward Just like that. So now we're going to do it another diamond. Go we'll back up this one up two diamonds. Back that one up on the third diamond. Now we want the cue ball to come forward two diamonds. One, two, which would be 12, two on our clock. Just like that. Okay, set that one ball up. Now this is coming through the center of the hole. He's going to try to shoot a 12-3. He wants his cue ball to come forward three diamonds from point of contact. And he's trying to hit a 12-3. Like that. Perfect. 
keep in mind these shots, like I said, we are not robots and we can't hit them exactly every time, but what we're trying to look for is a high percentage of consistency on our shot making. Okay, the thing you want to remember is that you have maximums that you cannot exceed. Such as if you hit, hit a ball, you can follow it from here or here. But once you come around it and you get a thin hit, then you just have to follow tangent. Now, we can move forward or backward only a small degree. But once we go on this line, we can turn left or right depending on 11 o'clock or 1 o'clock. Like say, for instance, if Chad wanted to move to a one o'clock and wants the ball back up in here. Okay, go ahead Chad, cut the ball in through the center of the hole, give me about a, a one o'clock, go right down there. Okay, that's all right, see. Okay, so you're over one diamond from your point of contact, which isn't pretty good. Do it again. <laughs> 